Good morning, Covenant City Church. Our devotion today is taken from Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. In these verses, we see Jesus calling his disciples to obedience and proving that he is the Lord of all things. Let's read the passage together. Luke 5, verses 1 to 7. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. So in these verses, we see that Jesus calls Simon, and we know Jesus later gives Simon a new name. So this is Peter that Jesus is talking to. And Jesus calls Peter to obedience. And we see two things in these verses. First, obedience to Jesus can look like foolishness to the world. And second, obedience to Jesus changes everything. So first, obedience to Jesus looks like foolishness to the world. So in verse four, Jesus and Peter are in the boats, right? And Jesus called Peter to go out into deep water in the middle of the day and fish. So this must seem really odd to the men in the boat because these men had been fishing for their whole lives. This was their job, this was their career. And Jesus was a carpenter. And they knew that the fish, they don't usually come out in the middle of the day and in this lake where they were in particular, the fishing was done in the shallow places, not in the deep places. So when Jesus was commanding Peter, he was asking him to do the opposite of what he has been taught to do his whole life. Listening to a carpenter and going fishing in the middle of the day, in the deep water, this would look crazy in the eyes of the world. So how does Peter respond? Well, in verse five, he says, Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing. So here, Peter is tired, right? He stayed up working all night. He has nothing to show for it. He's honest with Jesus and he's telling him that he's tired and maybe feeling a little bit discouraged, but he knows who Jesus is. Although next week, we're gonna see that Peter's knowledge of Jesus is still incomplete. In these verses, Peter shows that he knows enough about Jesus to know that we should obey him, right? He says, but at your word, I will let down the nets. Even though it seems crazy, even though it seems foolish, even though he's really tired, Peter will obey. And I wonder, where in our lives might Jesus be asking us to do something that seems foolish or crazy in the eyes of the world? Is there maybe something that's valuable in the eyes of God, but that might seem foolish to the people around us? When we, chose, when we choose to prioritize the needs of someone else over ourselves, when we choose to say no to a promotion to spend more time with our family, when we choose to not have sex before marriage, when we choose to give generously instead of keeping all of our resources to, for ourselves. These are things that might seem foolish in the world, but are precious in the eyes of God. Because we know Jesus, we can see the bigger picture. This is not foolishness. Obeying Jesus is what gives us life. We live differently because we know him. And so in these verses, secondly, we see that obedience to Jesus changes everything, right? Peter knew who Jesus was, he chose to obey, and everything changed. In verses six and seven, we see the disciples caught so many fish that the nets were breaking and their boat started to sink. This is an overwhelming amount of fish, right? They fished all night. They had used all of their resources, their energy, their strategy, their expertise, and they came up with nothing. But at one word from Jesus, everything changed. 
So in these verses, Peter experienced the material blessing of fish, right? He actually did catch the fish. And this is definitely a great day for Peter and his friends, but this miracle is a picture of the catch of people that Jesus is gonna bring into his kingdom. Looking at the overwhelming amount of fish that the disciples have caught is supposed to lead us into a feeling of awe and worship as we realize that Jesus has the power to change everything. He is showing his disciples that his word reverses the natural order and that he can accomplish his purposes as they obey his call. He is the Lord of the sea and everything in it. All the miracles in the gospels that we see serve to point to the reality of who Jesus is. He is the Messiah. He is the savior. He is the Lord of everything of creation. And the point of this miracle is not to focus on the fish, but on the one who accomplished the miracle. We who live after Jesus's resurrection and ascension have something even better than a boat full of fish. Because of Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we can know God. We can enjoy a reconciled relationship with the Father. He calls us to obey him, to participate in his mission, and he promises to be with us. And that changes everything. So friends, as we go about our lives today, let us draw near to Jesus. Let us study his word and spend time getting to know him so that we can recognize his voice when he calls us to obedience. And when we're asked to do something that might seem foolish in the eyes of the world, let us embrace that obedience with joy because we know the one who changes everything. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the Lord of all creation. You are the creator of the earth. You are the author of our salvation. God, we praise you for the marvelous grace that you have extended to us because you have made yourself known to us through the person and work of Christ. And now we can be reconciled to you and we can enjoy this right relationship with you. God, we pray that you would attune our hearts to your voice, that when you call us to obedience, you would make us courageous and willing and ready to do things that might seem foolish to the world because we are so in love with you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace that you have poured out on us. We pray in your name. Amen.